Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today's tutorial number is 61. Now in today's tutorial I'm going to go back to our character in game and I want to start making a move. So it should be a fairly quick tutorial. So let's open up our project in Unity. Oh, I clicked on Unity iPhone, the old one. What I wanted was Unity. I want to make sure model development's open. And I'm going to go to our scene which would be level one. I'm going to make sure it's the active scene. It should say so up here. And I'm just going to fire it up and take a look at my character. So he's just floating around in the air there. Uh, let me zoom into him on the scene window. So he's in a bit of a valley. He's floating. And I'm going to add the controls to him that come default with Unity to make him move and also not float. Now with Unity 3, they included new scripts. So I'm just going to delete the whole standard assets folder and then just re-import the packages. So I'll go to application, scroll down to my Unity folder. This is my Unity 3 folder. I'll go to standard packages. Now I'm going to pick up character controllers. And I'm going to want to re-import my water. I can't do both at the same time, so we'll just start off with water. Yes, import all of that. Now you'll notice the daylight water is red because it's lost its references down here. And I'm not sure if once I re-import if it'll go blue again. Yes, it does. So it just automatically reattached them. So I'm going to go and import another package. And this time I'm going to grab the character controllers. So this should be the first one. I'm just going to take a quick look, see if there's anything else here I want right now. Uh, nothing. I'll grab train assets too. Oh, and the train toolkit. I had that in there as well. So there's going to be a few more packages I want to include. So I'm going to include the character controller, the uh, train assets, train toolkit, and that's going to be it for now. So I'll just pause the video while I import all these. Okay, I've re-imported uh, all my standard assets, and well, the train toolkit I never did delete, but I re-imported anyway. It'll only re-import anything that's new. And now, if we start it up, and we're going to be looking at our character. So if we click on the character. Uh, I seem to have an extra game object parented here. So let me go look at that prefab. Yeah, I'm not sure why I have an extra wrapper around the actual model. So I'm going to change that right now. So I'm just going to drag him in to our scene. I'm going to go look at him. Uh, there he is. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to open him up. This is actually what I want to be the prefab. So I'm going to have to attach the player script to him, which is fine. We've got that done down here. Scripts. Oh, actually, we can just click the name of the script, and it'll bring us right to it. So I want it on him. Continue. I'll make sure my default animation is set to normal idle. Uh, play automatically. Uh, we can see actual list of animations that they have. Uh, I'm not going to do animate physics yet, and I'm only going to animate it visible. So that's it for what we had attached here. Now I'm going to go over and attach a player under physics the character controller and I'm also going to attach a couple scripts that come with our standard assets so we'll go down here we're going to character controller and uh, they actually have a third person controller which is kind of what we want I've actually never looked at this, this one before so I'm just going to drop that in to take a look at as well 
And then, of course, I dropped him in a valley, so it's hard to see. I'm just going to turn my terrain off right now, just so it's a little easier to see. So we have our character. And I'm going to turn the water off, too. There we go. And we have our construction worker. Great, we can use him as an NPC. So, where is he located? Third person, okay. So if we look at the scripts that are attached to him, we have the third person controller, a third person camera script, character controller, and of course his list of animations. I'm just gonna close the animation tab, the character controller we won't have to play with. So the third person controller script, which is right here, I'm going to take that, drag it onto our character. This one right here. So now when we click on it, it should be here. We'll want to set up his animations. So I'm just going to open up the animation tab on him, show his animations. So we'll want a default idle animation. So I guess we'll just pick our. Mm, I haven't actually looked at the animations. There's normal, idle, and idle. I'm just going to take normal, idle. Our walk animation. Actually, I'm going to take good idle. It just sounds better. And then for our walk animation, I'm just going to use. Uh, we only have one animation for walking here. So I'll also use the same one for run. Jump pose animation. We don't have one for jump. Uh, I'm just going to use as attack. Now when you're constructing your models for your game, this might be something you want to keep in mind of the different animations you're going to want. Uh, later on, we're going to want a model that has uh, animations for drinking potions and probably different types of attack. Maybe some sort of overhead attack for a bludgeoning attack, then a side-to-side -side attack for a slash, and maybe a thrusting attack for a pierce. Uh, it's completely up to you, but you'll just set these animations up here. We'll probably end up rewriting this whole script, but just to get familiar with the way Unity is doing it, you might notice that these scripts are also in C are in uh, JavaScript as well, so you can intermix the scripts that you're using. So we've got that set up. I uh, don't believe there's any other settings we have to play with there. So we'll go back up to our third-person controller, or the prefab for it, and we've added third person controller and the third person camera script uh, we haven't added that yet I haven't actually even checked it out yet but might save writing our own so I'm just going to drop that on them as well and of course the camera transform will just be the camera we're using in our game now I'm going to leave the construction worker in there just so I can see what he looks like because it'll probably just end up being a prefab for a NPC. We'll just detach the scripts to make a move. And I have to turn my water back on. So let's start it up. I attached the camera to the wrong guy, apparently. Let's just deactivate him and all his children for now. Start it up again. Ah, we've got to actually reattach our prefab. So I'm going to close standard assets. I'm going to stay in our prefab. And I'm going to take our little dude that we just updated. And I'm going to take uh, the 249 human animated. And I'm going to make that the new prefab. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not sure how that's going to work for the camera. I'll have to look at the script to see if it finds the camera or not. But we'll just start it up. And we have an error. So let's scroll down. Okay, we're gonna have to reattach our prefab to our game master. So game master. Uh, right here, player character, 
Every time you make an edit to your prefab, it's going to break. So you'll just have to reattach it. Start it back up. And there we go. He still seems to be floating a bit. And we have to make the animation continuous. Which is fine. Uh, I just want to see if the camera is selected. So we'll grab our PC. And it is grabbing our main camera already. So we don't even have to play with that. So let's take a look at that character controller to see uh, how it's positioned on our character. And this is why our character appears to be floating is because the collider that we have attached is quite a bit lower than what our character's feet are at. So we're just going to raise that up. So let's head over to our, our controller. Let me just close these up. So our character controller and your center here, let's move that up a bit. I'll start off at one and that actually looks like it worked. So I'm going to pause it or stop it I guess I should say. Go over to our player prefab and do the same thing over here. So it was one on the Y axis. Let's start it back up. And there we go. He's not floating anymore. I will play around with the animations a little bit later on to get them to constantly play over and over again. And we'll probably have to adjust the speeds of it as well. Yeah, but it looks pretty good. So let's move him to our starting location in our town. So in our Game Master script, I have the player's spawn point exposed. And for the little town that I made, I've got my starting point for my character to be at 920 on the X, 600 on the Z, and 60 in the air. So when I hit play, he drops down, and I can now explore my little town. Now the main thing I'm looking at here really is just to make sure that nothing's floating, that everything's pretty solid on the ground, that I have colliders on everything. And let's just go in. Yeah, so I can go in. Um, we do have quite a bit of work on our player character, but that's that's fine. All in good time. So I'm just going to go up, check out this house, make sure I can go in. Yeah. Don't need to completely explore the town. But it's... Uh, we got a little bit of... Uh, where it goes underground here. So I might want to smooth this out a bit. Make it a little bit flatter so the, the house sits on it better. But I just wanted to basically have my character be able to move around so I can get my, my town set up a little bit better. And we have one more house way over here. I guess I should have adjusted the run speeds of my character. So he moves a little faster. But I'll do that later. And I just want to go into my third one, make sure everything's okay. It doesn't appear to be floating anywhere. Uh, let's head on in. Now I want to play with my lighting a bit more because I shouldn't be getting the uh, lighting in here. But there's more pressing things than just playing with my lighting right now. But anyway, it looks like everything's fairly situated well. There's just that one house I have to fix up so it's not parsed down the ground. It's a very minor thing. But anyway, uh, if you can, why don't you go ahead and make a video of your little starter town and how you have it situated and upload a video and make it a response to this one here so everyone can see you know, what your starter town is going to look like. Your starter town might be your capital city, uh, mine I didn't want to be. I might actually change the assets yet again and put some little tents or something up. So I want it to be a fairly small, uh, kind of like a settlement type thing. But anyway, we got our character moving around our town. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.